Hello friends, this is Abby Jo and welcome to my cottage kitchen. In today's kitchen, we're going to be making sauerkraut. This is all you need to ferment yourself some good sauerkraut. And today I actually have carrots in my cabbage and I'm going to make a carrot sauerkraut mix. And all you need is some good clean sterile jars and a bowl, a spoon, a wooden spoon is great, and salt. And I have a little bit of brine here, leftover brine from the last batch that I'll just top off. Just something you, you know, you have to just practice and do a few times to find the exact taste that you like. But a rule of thumb here is about a tablespoon of salt per head of cabbage or, you know, mix here of carrots and cabbage, as you can see. And as you just saw, I just added that salt to each of these bowls and I'm going to stir and kind of um, knead this until it starts making its own juices and then I'll let it sit for a little while and then I'll stuff it into the jars. So I have been stirring, kneading, and mashing this up for the last 10 minutes. And now I'm going to actually put just a cloth over and let it sit for a few, I don't know, 15 minutes or 20 minutes. And it's just going to keep making its own juices. And then I'm going to stuff the jars. Oh, too bad. I just, that's cracked. Uh, I cracked this jar when I was sterilizing it and it's the first time I've ever bro uh, broken one of these. These jars are amazing. And um, when I was putting the boiling water in it, like I usually do, um, I didn't make sure the jar was tempered enough. The jar must have been too cold, so it cracked. So that's a big bum deal. Um, I'm going to take the lid off this lid is still in good shape. I'll save it for another jar and I'm gonna have to throw this away. got done doing the sauerkraut so I'm warming up some leftover clam chowder I chopped up some onions garlic and mushrooms and I decided I'll saute these two steaks and we'll cut them up for lunch We definitely like our steak rare. This is the beef that we ordered in bulk from a butcher shop and it is some of the best meat we have ever had.
I bought these two bookshelves this fall at a thrift store and my husband is fixing them up a little and installing them for me. I can't wait to start unpacking more of our books. Getting to look at my books again makes me so happy. I feel like every home needs a personal library for enjoyment, learning, and referencing. I have so many books and many more in boxes. I love cookbooks, gardening books, homestead and farming books, biographies, history, fiction, and old poetry. I have so many old vintage books along with many new ones. A long time ago when my oldest children were little, I would buy used books that were discarded from large libraries on eBay. And to this day, those are some of my favorite books that I read to my children. I often bake potatoes for an easy lunch. Such a humble thing the potato is, and yet such a basic staple for so many people throughout history. I put all this stuff on my counter today because I wanted to talk to you guys about just learning things and skills and why they're really beneficial for us. This has been all fermented now for over 10 days. We've had it in the fridge. It's absolutely delicious. One thing I love about fermenting with these kind of jars is I don't need any fancy tools. I just use these and all I do is simply open the jar up and burp it. Like I don't even lift it. I just like release the hinge, and then I put the hinge back on. That is how simple it is, and that's why I like making sauerkraut in these jars. It doesn't really require any fancy uh, equipment. So part of why I wanted to show you sauerkraut making is because today, later in the video, I'm gonna really talk about upping our skills and how important it is to learn new things. And I thought I'd talk about canning. Canning is a passion of mine. I absolutely love it. I love how it saves money. I love how you have instant ready meals. I mean, talk about fast food. You know, dumping food out of a jar is fast food. So uh, my tomatoes, I make tomato soup out of this all the time. I use it in a lot of my, a lot of my cooking. Um, we love pears and peaches and applesauce and jams and pickles. These are just like my absolute favorite, pickled garlic, which is on another video. I'll try to link all these things in the description and maybe put some in the video right here. I just recently invested into a digital Presto canner, pressure canner. I'm really excited about sharing that with you guys. I've always used a traditional pressure canner and you know, you have to babysit those and wait for the pressure to come up. And I have used those for years and they're great, but I really often have, you know, two to three, even six 
quarts of leftovers that I would just like to can. And I find that, you know, it's a lot of work sometimes just pulling down the pressure canner and getting everything all set up. So I did my research and found out there is a really cool digital pressure canner, a lot like the Instapot. And I'm excited to start playing around with that and you guys will see more of that in the future. I know some of you guys really want to learn how to can and some of you guys are even scared to do it. So what I'd like to say to you is start small, start with jam or pickles and work your way up. Find a friend or a mentor that will teach you. Find a online program or just get a really good book and call your grandma. Any of those things, just it is a really good way to learn how to can. I love the ball canning book. It's just a real easy one for referencing, but this is my favorite canning book. It's Growing and Canning Your Own Food by Jackie Clay. This book is very worn. The back is missing. Um, I just love it because she talks about growing the vegetables and canning the vegetables, and I trust her. She is a homesteader extraordinaire, and she's been doing this for years, and I love finding a book with someone that has so much wisdom. Uh, this, so this to me, this is an amazing book to reference when you're learning how to can and has great recipes in it. I just really have it on my heart to encourage you guys. I have it just, it's been so strong lately that I just felt like I had to talk to you guys about it. I just wanted to encourage you guys. You just want to learn new skills, grab some books, watch some videos. And I would love to hear in the comments below, what new skills do you guys want to learn? I am dying to hear what you guys want to learn, what you have learned this year, and uh, leave me some books recommendations. I would love to hear about that. These are just a few examples, but like Country Baking is one of my absolute favorite whole grain recipe books. Ken Hadrick is amazing. He's just, this book is like, when I can just curl up and read. I've baked so many things out of this cookbook. I love it and it's just great. So if you want to get more familiar with cooking with whole grains, find videos, find good cookbooks. If you want to learn how to cook with rye or you want to make sourdough, dive into books, dive into videos and learn that new skill. I love bread and I have a ton of cookbooks on bread. I even get vintage ones just because I enjoy new recipes. I enjoy just seeing what people make and it's just fun. And some, some breads I'll make one time and then some breads will become a favorite and I'll make it many times. So this is just a vintage one I got at a thrift store and I love it. I have so many old books and those are actually some of my favorites. Sometimes we just need to be encouraged about cooking and sometimes history or old cookbooks will really encourage me on what to cook or how do they cook and save money in the old days. One of my absolute favorite, favorite recipe authors is Edna Lewis and The Taste of Country Cooking. This is a treasure. It's just amazing. The stories alone are worth reading. You could literally curl up and just read this, but this gal is amazing and then she talks about just their homesteading years and everything in this cookbook and it's really really fabulous so this is a keeper something i actually enjoy and this isn't really a skill but i just love reading books about living in the seasons cooking with the seasons and anything that will inspire me about that and this is through the kitchen window by susan hill this book just the illustrations it's super cottagey i love it and it inspires me it inspires me to live really intentionally and slow living through the seasons. This is one of those treasure books that I read all the time over and over again. So this is an excellent book. So we live in a cold climate, so I definitely will always be looking into books on cold climate gardening. You might live in a warm climate, then do your research on warm climate gardening. Find a friend in your area, find farmers that are already doing what you want to do. Those are great ways. Um, right now I'm looking at organic gardening and cold climates by Sandra Perrin, that's a French name. I'm not sure if I said that right. This is an excellent book. And of course, this is Ruth Stout. She's a forerunner in organic gardening. I love this little booklet on mulching. And I've done a lot of permaculture type gardens. So I'm definitely gonna be using some of her mulching method with probably some terracine and some swells. I'm not really sure yet. We're still kind of working on our garden plans. 
you just might want to homestead where you are in an apartment or in town or out in the country. So just get homesteading books. They're everywhere. Go to your local library, go to thrift books, Amazon. The Backyard Homestead is a really good overall for just all the categories from raising animals and food. This is a really good book. I want to start saving seeds more. So I have the book Saving Seeds by Mark Rogers. I will put all the links of the uh, books down in the description below if you guys are interested in any of these books. But yeah, this is one Saving Seeds. I want to get some more books on this. I am really excited. And actually, my daughter's super excited. So we both have been really uh, digging into all the seed saving and growing and all that good stuff. Someone recently asked me how I learned to decorate and do I have books that inspire me? And I kind of have a yes and no for that. I don't have a ton of decorating books. I love good magazines. I love vintage Victoria magazines. I have a huge stack of those. Um, I also just enjoy all kinds of books. So like I'll see things in cookbooks and old fashioned living. And I've just been around antiques and stuff in a lot in my life and I've kind of developed my own style. Um, but this is a excellent book, English Cottage Interiors. So this is one that I do have. It's just so rustic and I just enjoy it. And again, this isn't even really a design book. It's just rustic interiors of cottages. And I just enjoy it for inspiration. A lot of times I'll just find things that I love and I'll study them. And that's, that's just what I do. That's kind of my take on decorating. We have all kinds of books. We have building books. We have gardening books. We have tons of cookbooks in, in our library. I love for homeschooling. I love the Charlotte Mason method. And this book is so amazing. This is a great one to read. I also am really encouraged by the book Teaching from Rest, a Homeschooler's Guide to Unshakable Peace. This is an excellent book. Really simple reads, but encouraging. And I really like both of these. So today is a great day to start reading a new book, learning a new skill, watching a new video. Just encourage you guys to put your hand to something new and see where it takes you. You can add simple toppings or go all out. Today I'm adding our sauerkraut that we let ferment for 10 days. Some of my smoked pickled garlic, butter, sour cream, and salt and pepper. Simple and delicious. I have been waiting to show you my prize vintage cow picture. I scored on this summer at a thrift store for $10. Yes, you heard that right. It is five feet by seven feet and I couldn't put it on the wall until we got all the tools out of our dining room. We still have to add our chandelier and curtain rods, but that will all come soon. And now for our little Fika coffee break. We both are so happy to have access to our books again. Daniel loves reading interesting facts and stories to me about the old ways and the craftsmanship that they used in their daily lives. Daniel and I both geek out about history.
And as always, I will link the recipes and books that you saw in this video in the description box below. A big thank you to everyone who has been supporting us through Buy Me A Coffee and to all the lovely friends who comment, like, and share these videos. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you.